With the recent release of Xiang Yun, famously known as Cloud Retainer, let's take an analysis on her character's growth. From a being who lived a thousand years in Liyue, let's recall her achievements and also discuss the reasons why she distanced herself from humanity until finally coming to accept her role in the bustling and vibrant scene of Liyue Harbor. It's an interesting story that should be shared, and one that is written beautifully. With Chen Yu Vale up there with this patch, I'll be doing a whole summary of what happened in this new region, and we'll be up there in a few days. Starting with number 1. Cloud Retainer has a knack for mechanical designs and creations. I suppose it was given when first learned about how she was the one who made the Dwelling in the Clouds, which is one of the engineering marvels located in Liyue. Veteran players of Genshin can relate to this, as we all have tried to gain luck and pull our characters from this place. This idea that Cloud Retainer loves invention and engineering was further cemented during the Moonlight Merriment event, where she created a supreme cuisine machine that aims to cook various dishes more efficiently. Cloud Retainer also created the Damask device from the Off Travels and Treasures event, which was created from stacked paper. This is unique and impressive for a device that holds no mechanical parts inside and also releases confetti when you open a chest. Cloud Retainer also created Yao Yao's bunny, called Yogui. This mechanical rabbit would alert the Adepti if ever Yao Yao would be in danger. In her latest invention, Cloud Retainer created the Bloom Pruner, a mechanical device that can transform into the shape of any creature to blend into its environment. She invented this device as a way to help Street Ward Rambler in her gardening and landscaping. In the last event, we learned that Street Ward Rambler offered one of these bloom pruners to Guoba as a gift, and got it to take the form of an Oni Kabuto, partaking in Ito's Beetle Brawls. These are such prime examples of her genius as an inventor. It seems that if there were more of Cloud Retainer and her inventions, we could see an advanced version of Liyue, probably even beating Fontaine in terms of technology. Anyhow, if you thought Cloud Retainer was already impressive, it appears to not be on the same level with Guizhong's mechanical genius. Back before Liyue Harbor was built, the Adepti alongside Morax and Guizhong would gather in Mount Aosun. In one of these meetings, Rex Lapis was asked to judge Guizhong and Cloud Retainer's works, to which it was declared that Guizhong's ballista was was better. It's tough to say what Cloud Retainer presented here, but I could assume that it was a trebuchet given the rotating lever, and what appears to be a bowl-shaped receptacle supported by a handle which would hurl certain rocks with a similar size. At that point, when Morax chose Guizhong's invention, Cloud Retainer knew that she was no match for Guizhong's skills in machinery. Despite that, Cloud Retainer continues to expand her skills and expresses her curiosity towards mechanical inventions, especially those that were created by humans. As much as she loves inventing new designs, she also likes to study and disassemble existing ones, such as the new firework design gifted by Kuching during the Fleeting Collars in Flight event. Through the years since Guizhong's death, Cloud Retainer seems to have reached a level that no one can match, and in the present day, she can arguably be the best mechanical genius in Liyue. At number 2, Cloud Retainer's latest form is more bird than human. One of the intricate details on Xiang Yun's design is that she possesses less human features and instead has talent fingers, with scales and flowy retresses like patterns. Her eyes have the same color scheme and the red eye ring from her crane form transformed into the glasses she currently wears. Her hairpin is a transformation of her crane form's crown, maintaining the same shape and design. Her outfit mimics the wings of a bird, and the color scheme follows the one from the wings down to the tail. A lot of players, including me, have exclaimed the similarity between her design with the character Bayonetta. However, as explained by the devs, they wanted to give her design an image of an adeptus riding with the wind, similar to a crane while also showing the look of an engineer and as well as how hours of inventing and disassembling can be to the appearance. Continuing with number 3, Cloud Retainer is extremely competitive to the point that she would create the most ingenious design just to prove her place. At one time, she undermines the Jade Chamber, seeing it as inferior compared to her dwelling in the clouds, saying it's nothing but an utterly tedious and mundane piece of work. This is one prime example how Cloud Retainer doesn't want her designs to be far behind those engineers in Liyue Harbor. As much as she loathes those at Liyue Harbor, she also enjoys challenging other Adepti to prove who is the greatest inventor. During a meeting thousands of years ago, the Adeptus Seagazer displayed his riches, which suddenly became the center of attention. As a context, Seagazer was the featured Adeptus in last 2023's Lantern Ride event and was the owner of the Fantastic Compass. This was the giant 
time travel device we got to see and experience in the interlude of Liwa's arc. Now, going back, both Guizhong and Cloud Retainer would showcase their most admirable mechanical inventions since they couldn't stand by and let Seagazer have all the fun. That time, Cloud Retainer thought it was ridiculous that Seagazer was attempting to outdo her since he hadn't actually produced anything, arguing that he had just dug them out of the earth using his exploring abilities. She therefore frequently argued with Seagazer, highlighting her competitive nature with humans and Adepti alike. For number 4, Cloud Retainer still grieves for her fallen Adepti friends. Back when we first visited Mount Aosung, we offered dishes to a stone table surrounded by three seats. This table was once where Guizhong, Morax, and Cloud Retainer would meet and discuss while sharing a meal. In the present day, Cloud Retainer still hasn't made peace with Guizhong's death and tends to avoid the memory of it. This is one of the main reasons why Cloud Retainer isolates herself in Mount Aosung and refuses the change of an era within Liyue Harbor. She also disagrees with how her old friend, Madame Ping, accepts her current role in guiding the humans of Liwe as she wants to avoid another incident to happen. However, in the last Lantern Rite event, Madame Ping and Ganyu seem to have shared their opinions and made Cloud Retina rethink her long-kept pain and grief. From this moment, it's one that is needed to be heard by Cloud Retina as she decides to change her form and accepts the challenge of living within Liwe Harbor. From here, let us hope she finally grows to see mere humans as family. Same with her fellow Adepti. At number 5, Cloud Retainer places a huge respect for Rex Lapis. As one of Zhang Li's oldest allies in Liyue, it's no surprise that Cloud Retainer is familiar with the post arcan identity of their former Geo Lord. With their friendship going back all the way to the rise and fall of the Guili Assembly, Cloud Retainer, as well as many other Adepti like Xiao and Mountain Shaper, made a contract with Rex Lapis to protect Liyue Harbor and its people. In dangerous times such as the Arkham War, when the agreement was established, the Adepti pledged to defend and shield Liwe from threats. To illustrate the Adept of her devotion, she stated that she and the other Adepti had protected Liwe Harbor for 37 centuries under the leadership of Rex Lapis. In Arkham Quest Chapter 1 Act 1 of The Land Amidst Monoliths, she even made a threat to destroy all of Liwe Harbor in order to uncover the person responsible for Rex Lapis's alleged death. With her now being playable and having just displayed their long and rich history as allies in her latest story quest, I hope to see more interactions from them in future events. Listing at number 6, Cloud Retainer's treatment with her disciples. As someone who lived far from the busy streets of Liyue and preferred to ride the swift winds of Xingyun Peak as mentioned by Shenhe, Cloud Retainer seems to display profound love and care for both Shenhe and Ganyu. As a context to how she got to mentor the two, Cloud Retainer has taken Shenhe as one of her disciples after the traumatic experience she dealt with as a young kid, an experience wherein Shenhe's father brought her to a cave where a forbidden ritual was to be summoned. This ritual involves a dark red-eyed Sili, which intends to take Shenhe's life as a form of sacrifice in exchange for the revival of Shenhe's deceased mother. Still, thanks to Shenhe's will to survive, she fought the spirit and lived. Days after, Cloud Retainer stepped in and found her, decided to heal her and take her in. As a way to start her discipleship with Cloud Retainer, Shenhe brushed her hair with a special jade comb trice, which is a belief where she's letting go of her past and walking into a new road with no regrets and sorrow. Since then, Cloud Retainer has kept her from harm, even more so binding her with red ropes to prevent her from triggering her violent nature. Now, Shenhe regards Cloud Retainer as her master and obediently follows her teachings. Despite Cloud Retainer's pompous attitude, it doesn't stop her from cherishing her disciples and guiding those she helped raise. As for Ganyu, we're not entirely sure if it was Ganyu's mother that was shown in the Flavors of the World teaser, but we can piece out how her parents met by reading the Volume 5 of Records of Jiyun. I'm not gonna delve into that, as we'll focus on what Ganyu was under Cloud Retainer's care. In Ganyu's story quest, it seems that Cloud Retainer likes sharing stories of Ganyu Ganyu when she was little. Given that Ganyu could be a thousand years old at this point, the fact that Cloud Retainer still remembers those moments of Ganyu exhibits a special type of love and tenderness. Adding in on how Cloud Retainer seems to prepare drills just for Ganyu to retain her adeptus form, keeping her prepared for dangers ahead. 
With her latest story quest, Cloud Retainer begins to know the reasons behind why her disciples desire to stay with humans. If you haven't yet finished Cloud Retainer's story quest, spoilers ahead. From her story quest, it highlights more of her development as a character as she begins to make peace with her grief and takes on a human disciple as part of understanding more why Ganyu and Shenhe chose to stay within Liyue Harbor. She begins to see how humans develop themselves to their inner desires despite their mortal lives. It's a beautiful written message and one that changed Cloud Retainer's perception. Now lastly, at number 7, Cloud Retainer isn't the outgoing type but still enjoys a good talk. It seems she breaks the norm that if you're an introvert, you wouldn't know how to talk to people. That isn't always the case and it is because of this that many players relate to her personality. From the times we've met Cloud Retainer, she always had some good stories to tell as well as needing to get serious when the moment arrives. Cloud Retainer decides to have a new alias in Xiangyu. Fun fact, her alias Shang Yun comes from a Chinese proverb, which translates to leisurely clouds and wild cranes. If we take the deeper meaning of this proverb, it's used to characterize someone who leads a carefree, burden-free life, free like the cranes and careless like the sky. Adding to that, in Chinese culture, the crane represents longevity, nobility, peace, grand ambition, seclusion, and so on. We can see cranes on Chinese paintings, clothing patterns, ceramics, and they are often depicted in literature. From here, it resulted in having many Chinese idioms about cranes such as ride a crane to the west, which is a euphemism for death. So, anyway, that's all I have for this episode. Now, if you have some thoughts about the video, leave a comment and let us know. Also, if you missed any of these things, or if you want to add more that I haven't mentioned, share it down. If you like this video, leave a like, and if you're not yet subscribed, click that button there. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. So, as usual, my name is Clementine. Until the next one, be safe and stay tuned.